Good morning, Guardians. The Hijabi Gamer here, and it is Friday. And not only is it Friday, it is the holiday after the end of Ramadan. Ramadan, the last day was yesterday, today's a holiday. Still bringing you a Zer location video though, because it's Friday and Zer is in the tower. Now, apparently, I think it was the week before last, my video never uploaded. I didn't even realize that. So, my near perfect record has now been tarnished. I was re uploading another video, and I noticed that it said upload failed. So, my apologies, I didn't even notice until like a week later. However, I'm bringing you now another Zer video. We are in the original tower. It's original destiny. The usual reminder. Um, he is only in the tower until Sunday morning at 5 a.m. for me, about 48 hours. He does not stay until reset. That is important. Destiny 2, he stays until reset. And reset in Destiny 2 happens later in the day. Reset in original destiny starts early in the morning, and Zur is gone by Sunday, so two days before reset. Anyway, the way you know if Zur is in the tower, or in his other location, the reef, this mark over here, the purple mark over here, that lets you know he's in the tower. If you are here on a Friday morning, uh, or whatever it is, your equivalent in your time zone, and you don't see that mark, it means he's in the reef, and there's only one location, he's in the reef. Anyway, we are heading to the left, and we're heading towards the speaker and he has a decent week i mean it's, look for me a decent week is no trespasser now i'm being told now that i'm wrong and being unfair to trespasser in destiny 2 as someone who primarily runs arc trespasser is pretty good in original that in destiny 2 but i have an inherent bias towards test trespasser after seeing zir carry so, it feels like clearance Oh, another hunter with the with the same cloak. So wait, is it the same? Yeah, it is the same. All right, Zer is by the big round door. What has he got? I know he has a couple of things, but I didn't look at everything. So first off, the usual legacy engram. As always, I feel this is overpriced. Thirty-one strange coins for what is probably going to be a year one weapon that you really can't use except in oh, crucible. Which honestly, I mean, I've heard mixed things. But you can, and you can do private matches, but 31 strange coins is a lot of strange coins. That's a lot of heavy ammo since you could be buying instead. So, I, I mean, as I said, I know people who say they have like thousands of them. But other than that, a lot of better stuff. Next, for the Titans, you have the Helm of Seat 14, which blind enemies inside your Ward of Dawn. As always, my usual guideline. If it isn't bulkier than the Corvus helmet from Warframe, then it's okay. And while this looks like something a bug, it just looks creepy. Um, and I don't know, it doesn't feel like it's worth it, but then I'm not really a Titan main, so Titans let me know. Am I being unfair to this? Um, not bulkier than the Corvus helmet, so it's okay for, with me. Um, I've always wondered, since Saint 14 returns in Destiny 2 as a shadow of himself... Um, does he demand his helm be returned? This is his helm. Also, what does it mean when multiple people have the helm of Saint-14? How many helms of Saint-14 are there? Are there knockoff helms of Saint-14? Is there a secret under underground market selling helms of Saint-14? Where you go up to him and like, no, 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 I swear. The authentic helm of Saint-14. And you'll be like, yeah, well, my, my brother... That other hunter, and no, my other, that titan, he has the same thing. He says he has the authentic helm of Saint-14. How am I supposed to know this is the authentic one? Well, because I'm charging three times the price. That one was a knockoff. So he probably, you know, has a gig going where he's like, keeps charging more than the next person. So he's like, yeah, well, that titan says he got the helm of Saint-14 from you. Yeah, well, that one was a knockoff because I'm charging you three times the price. This is the authentic one. And does he ever, like, now in Destiny 2, come up to that secret underground market and it's like, I want my helm back. I don't know. Honestly, given what they did with Saint-14, he probably will let it continue because he's just a shadow of his former self. He used to be awesome. Anyway, next we have the Don't Touch Me's for the Hunter, which I think is awesome. This is great for, for example, the brawl section at the beginning of Crota's End. It's been years since I did it, but I used to be able to solo that, even on the most difficult, the hardest difficulty. It's been a while, so yeah, it would take a bit of finding myself how to do it. 
because there's the that ogre at the end and the wizards and everything. But this is great because taking damage from a melee attack makes you briefly invisible. And thrall attack you by melee. It's actually just a great thing if you're going like stealth as a hunter. So love these. Don't touch me. Definitely pick them up. Honestly, I've said this before, just pick everything up. It adds to your grimoire score. It unlocks the blueprints, which is great. So just pick everything up. Then for the the warlocks, you have the Skull of Dire Ahamkara. Take reduced damage while using Nova Bomb. Improved energy drain abilities. Heard from warlocks. This is decent. Honestly, I, I, I don't play enough um, warlock to be sure. Whenever I play warlock, it was primarily for the self-res because I'd be soloing stuff. And yeah, self-res definitely helps. Um... It's bulkier than the Corpus helmet, honestly. Look, I mean, look, just look at it. Top is definitely bulkier than the Corpus one. So, yeah. Not a big fan of it in appearance. And I really haven't done much by way of using the Void abilities as a Warlock. Again, self-res. Self-res is awesome. Can't believe they took that out of Destiny 2. Anyway, next one of my favorite guns and ones they have not brought back to Destiny 2. I'm still waiting for it. And yes, I know there's Risk Runner, but Risk Runner is different. Zala Supercell. Definitely something to pick up. I love Zala Supercell. It's a primary weapon that does arc damage. It's cool. It's just... Arc projectiles have the chance to chain lightning when enemies are close together. Which is great, especially when you're fighting Cabal and they are all coming at you. Uh, you know how sometimes those phalanxes will just like group together. Use this and you'll just arc them all. So... It's great for arc burn. It's great for the rare times you'll have arc burn and primary damage burn. And you'd have like top, just, it'll melt enemies. I love Zablo Supercell. Then you have here, bolts from the blue, double kills with this weapon. Charge a small amount of super energy and return ammo to the magazine. This is just a mega exotic. I mean, come on. First you got the arc, the, the, um, the chain lightning. And then you've got double kills giving you a small amount of super energy and return ammo to the magazine i mean this is just a mega exotic just a cool you know if you remember when exotics were exotics and a lot of stuff they could do that's just kick ass yes zala supercell was one of them i wish they would bring zala supercell as it is into destiny 2. i have a soft side for zala supercell let's use zala super anyway next we have hawk moon and carrion which, again, I'm not a fan of Hawkmoon. I know a lot of people who are. This is the the exotic, this is the ornament you're getting. Carrion. Not a fan of Carrion either. I like to think my guardian maintains his weapons a lot better than that. I prefer the one I have, which is Moonglow, but that's Carrion. As I said, I, I'm more of an ace of spades person, but you have luck in the chamber. One random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. Then you have Two more random bullets in your magazine deal considerable bonus damage. That means three bullets out of the magazine, once you fully unlock it, deal bonus damage. Okay, now, for the ease of the math, I drop it from 13 to 12. So three out of 12. That means you have less than a 25% chance of getting that random bullet. Which is why I like Ace of Spades. The effects of the Ace of Spades are guaranteed. You get a precision shot, you're going to move, one bullet from your reserves to your magazine. This, you have a 25% chance of getting that random bullet that'll do considerable bonus damage. I know people like it. I'm acknowledging that. I just personally prefer a guaranteed perk over a 25% perk. I think it's a cool, cool gun. Mine is fully unlocked. So I have used it. I'm a big hand cannon person. I just, plus there's the fact that the Ace of Spades Used to be for hunters only. Requesting visual that, was, that was pretty sweet. That each class had their own unique exotic. That's the Hawk Moon. And then you have um, Nemesis Star and Meteorite. So Nemesis Star and Meteorite. First off, uh, which one is it? That's a bullet. Meteorite. Okay. Yeah, again, I, I like my guns to look cool. I don't like them to look but that is meteorite. This silver bullet. The silver bullet. Yeah. Now I like it without any ornaments. But the ornament you're getting is meteorite. Now uh, Nemesis Star. 
On trigger pull, this weapon's initial burst has a higher rate of fire. Found. This is a machine gun. I like machine guns because it gives you a lot of bullets. So if you're doing, for example, match game, then I would put three different elements, and one of them would be a machine gun, so it gives me more of that um, element of um, bullets. But in general, yeah, I like machine guns. They give you a lot of bullets that are more powerful. Um, I'm trying to remember what this thing to do. I haven't used Nemesis Star in a while. Um, I tend to prefer using exotics in my primary slot. And wait, strange gravity. When holding down the trigger, range and accuracy increase as rate of fire decreases. Heals grant bonus grenade energy. So I should probably mess around with my exotics. Um, range and accuracy increase as rate of fire. Yeah, okay, that seems decent. I said it's been a while since I've used this one. Um, one of my favorite re uh, heavy is the Hunger of Crota. Shells fired from this weapon track their targets and cluster bombs. For me, the ideal rocket launcher, tracking, and cluster bombs. Of course, tracking has ruined my aim completely for rocket launchers in Destiny 2. I got so used to tracking now, I can't hit the broad side. I've been, I can't hit the broad side of a barn rocket launcher. But, so, you know, to me, Hunger of Crota is like, Four bands, Gallahorn. My Gallahorn only, honestly, is on my level 12 hunter because I deleted one of my characters because I wanted to replay the campaign. And yes, one of the things that people don't know is that if you have the pre ordered Iron Gallahorn, there's no level lock. Now, if you dismantle it and reclaim it, then it has a level 40 level lock, which is the problem with my PlayStation. I think it's my PlayStation has the level locked um, Gallahorn. But on my Xbox, it's either this way, or it's either that, or it's flipped. My, I think my Xbox Hunter has the Gallahorn, but there's no level lock on it. So my, like, level 12 Hunter is using a light 400 weapon. It's insane. So I'm pretty sure it's Xbox. Either it's the other way around, and my PlayStation account has the light 400 Gallahorn on a level 12 Hunter. Because both of them have a low-level Hunter in addition to a... Either a Titan or a Warlock and another Hunter. Anyway, I use a lot of Hunger of Crota simply because then it frees up the exotic so slot for, say, Telesto. I'm really liking Telesto. Or I've been, I was using Mida for some reason. I don't remember why. It's been a while. Anyway, um, sweet. Next, you have all the usual stuff. Usual stuff. One can never have enough heavy ammo since. I wish they'd bring heavy ammo since to Destiny 2. I know there are reasons why they don't need them. It's just the hoarder in me needs them. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Share this with fellow Destiny people because, yes, Original Destiny is awesome. If you have not picked up Original Destiny, I highly recommend it. It's available. Go for the PS4 or Xbox One versions because it has Rise of Iron. And Rise of Iron just added so much, not just Rise of Iron to the game. It's a lot more stuff. And I highly recommend it. I mean, I think at full price, it's 60 bucks, and you get everything. And the only things missing from Original Destiny right now are Trials of Osiris and Iron Banner. You can even do private matches in Crucible, which includes Sparrow Racing League. Yes, Sparrow Racing League, you have private matches for. So I highly recommend Original Destiny. You will get so much content before you even begin to notice the lack. Weekly resets happen, nightfalls happen. There are often a lot of new people I may in the game. Let's see, what have we got here? Is, um, the way you know if a person's new is their grimoire score. So, for example, this person's a pretty new person. They have 1,500. That means they're pretty new compared to, like, say, 5,000 or another, or my 4,955. Um, that's not a new person. That's not a new person. So we have at least one pretty new person. I mean, they're still using that. That's the second character they created. I highly doubt that's their first. So they probably have more than one character low level because 1500 Grimoire is still pretty low. They might have made it to max level their other character, but not to light 400. Generally, you'd have a higher Grimoire score if you made it to light 400. But I've seen oftentimes a lot of new characters in the tower. I've seen up to a third of the tower consisting of new. So. 
yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It's it's a very... I feel the story in Original Destiny is a lot better now that they've, you know, this Rise of Iron, they've made it better. Anyway, like I said, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, well, power. I will definitely be getting back to my weekly reset videos, my solo runs of the Challenge of the Elders, and much more.